Right, slightly different vlog style for everybody today. What I've done is I've played a series of holes and I've done strokes gained for each shot I play. So we're gonna to talk today a little bit about my emotional feeling connected to each golf shot, something the golfers struggle with day in, day out, compared to the factual, actual benefits of gains and losses on that actual shot. So it'll be a little bit about when you should get upset and when you shouldn't, because I do think golfers tend to get upset a lot, and often, in my experience with playing with amateurs, there's times where I just think, oh, you shouldn't be that upset with that shot, it's not that bad. So you're gonna see two sets of numbers after each shot. I'm gonna talk you through what they mean, but we've basically got strokes gained against the Tour Pro. So these are uh, averages taken from the PGA Tour against strokes gained against a scratch golfer. Should be a fun one. Let me know in the comments down below if this makes sense, if this means anything to you or not. I think we could do loads like this. It's such an interesting experiment. So first hole, measuring from this tee, 402 yards, 402 yards. This hole is a dogleg left, so I'm trying to take it over the left side. That's my key shot, it cuts down the dogleg. Also on this hole, I have a tendency to flail it off to the right, because it's just like, it feels a bit deaf on the left, room on the right, and I kind of make my natural bail. Hit the drive decent, didn't quite strike it, so I didn't actually fly the tree, actually caught the tree, and ended up luckily between the two bunkers on that shot. I was gaining. Against a scratch handicapper, 0.11. Against a tour pro, I lost, so 0.1. So 122 yards into the flag from a very good location. It's a very narrow green. I'm a bit out of the roughs, but I've got plenty of green to run it down there. Hit a decent shot. Didn't allow for the wind, which is something I often make the mistake of at Honiton. I've just not played there enough to remember that it's actually very high up and the wind's load stronger than you can often feel on some holes. And it moved off to the right. I played it how I wanted and the wind caught it. Didn't read the wind very well. Missed the green. So my approach play against a Tor Pro lost 0.15. And against a scratch handicapper, I lost 0.07. Nice basic little left to right chip. Really happy with how I played it. Kept it on the high side. My chipping is pretty weak, so to gain in this area for me means a lot to me. Against the Tor Pro, I gained 0.23. And then against a amateur, I gained 0.29. Tapping in the putt from the distance I was, there's no gains or loss. Everyone, amateurs, so scratch golfer and Tor Pro should be holding the length of putt. Um, what was interesting on that hole, so against a Tor Pro, I lost 0.02. So I fractionally lost against the field on average on that hole with the Tor Pro, so it's playing slightly under par. But, I mean, again, uh, against a Tor Pro, I wouldn't be that upset losing such a minuscule amount. And then against a Scratch Handicapper, I gained 0.34. Now, what's interesting, when I look at the averages for each hole at Honiton, this one plays over a shot above par on average to the members. So against the membership, I was gaining a good shot and a half, almost. Right, let's move on to the next holes. I think you get the gist now. Hopefully, post comments if this makes sense or not. Um, so a little bit more, you're gonna watch me play. A little less of my talking. We'll review the hole at the end of the next one. So again, misjudging the wind off the tee, just letting it move off. You hit in a funnel and it moved it off to the right, but quite happy with the distance control of the tee shot. There's an anomaly in the chip shot here, which we'll come to. It comes back again on one of the later holes. So I don't know if any of you have spotted the strokes gained on that chip shot. It's really interesting from the pro to the amateur. Maybe in the comments down below if you spotted it. Um, tell me what you think that means. I'll discuss what I think it means further on in the video because we get another situation where it comes up. And then holding the seven foot part, I mean, it gained on a Tor Pro 0.43, almost half a shot. And then against an amateur, it gained 0.53, over half a shot. Um, the tee shot on the amateur lost 2.6. Overall, I gained 0.29 on that hole against a scratch golfer. Against a Tor Pro, I gained 0.06. 
So again, quite happy lost at the time. So I'm 0.4 up, 0 0.04 up against the Tor Pro at the moment on these two holes, which obviously I'd be Im immensely happy with. But it's so interesting, isn't it? When you start looking at holes, shots this way, what a shot actually means isn't always one shot. So a par on that hole is actually, well, against a scratch handicapper, it's a 0.3 almost win against the scratch player and then a 0 0.06 win against that tour pro so the par actually doesn't mean par does it it's really interesting and starts making you think very differently about how you should go about your emotions i think on the golf course let's watch the next ones Love this demonstration of the hole. So it's a birdie. So in theory, it's one under par. So I'm one shot better off than par. Against the tour pro, I'm 0.9 better off. So I'm not one shot off against the average tour pro playing that hole, that length, if there was a tournament there. I'm above average of what they're doing, but I'm not leading. I'm, I'm in the field of other people making birdie on that hole. Now against a scratch handicapper, I'm 1.18. So I'm almost 1.2 shots better off. So it's worth less than a shot against certain players, but it's worth more than a shot against the other players that obviously I would be playing with more the scratch elite rather than the tour pro guys who, and girls who just generally beat me every time we play. And then the other big thing so far, if you look at my strokes gained on tee shots in my two drive, my best drive was on this hole and I've gained against the tour pro 0.16 and the first tee shot I lost 0.10. So I, I'm, I'm gaining tiny amounts on the tee. It makes it so clear to me how much I'm leaving on the table off that tee compared to the best players I would love to be able to play against, or certainly when we film with them, get them past like a 15th hole or something like funky like that. Which is why I'm so keen on doing my strength chaining and stuff to see where I can push distance and accuracy for myself, just out of interest as a coach. But it's so clear, like my approach shot gaining 0.4 uh, against the pro, that's good. That's just really good. But my tee shots, even my best tee shot, is not even close to gaining half a shot against that field. So I'm always going to be up against it. The pressure's always going to be on my approach play. It's always going to be on my recovery play. It's always going to be on my putting. And that's something I've definitely felt through my career. It's maybe just something I've not identified enough when I used to play. Um, because the world wasn't so tuned in to where these gains and losses were coming from. Let's go to the next hole. So my first putt you can see there has lost 0.3 against the Tour Pro, against an amateur it lost 0.24, 12 foot putt, should have been hitting it maybe a bit closer, obviously it's saying, and more people are holding those, or there's a group, of, there's a percentage of people who are holding those. Um, and then the foot putt obviously makes no difference for either sets. Again, one of my best drives, you hear me say, I ripped that one, I think it's still in the edit. Um, against the Tour Pro, I'm gaining 0.2. One of my biggest gains off the tee but again it's still not even half a shot it's i'm always going to be up against it think about it if you are one of those players who can gain 0 0.8 0 0.12 or anything crazy like that off the tee the advantages if you can keep it on play on certain days are just going to be so massive it's so clear isn't it 
my second shot, which I didn't feel was that bad against the Pro, it's gaining 0 0.03. Against an Amateur, again, it's gaining 0.18. My wedge play distance control definitely could improve, I know that. Um, overall, against the Scratch Handicapper, I'm gaining 0.22. And against the Tour Pro on that hole, it's a par, but I'm losing 0 0.07 against them. Again, just losing. Second shot not close enough, putt wasn't good enough, and really my tee shot, they're gonna be 30 yards up there, so they're not having an 80 yard shot, they're having a 40 or a 30 or a 60 yard shot, depending on bounce into that green, and got more chance of hitting it closer to the hole than I did. Love this tee shot, it's uphill, and you just do not appreciate up and downhill enough, I think, in people's averages. So look at where my tee shot finishes. That's with rolls, 264 uh, finish distance. Everyone knows my distances and where I'm trying to push them. This is again where if I could push my distance further, if I could have those advantages of extra distance, even when you get into the uphill tee shots, you know, that should be a miss hit, shortest shot. That was my average hit, not my best, but certainly not my worst by a long way. Um, and my tee shot is gaining like, look at it, 0 0.01. It's just not good enough, is it? So there's a few points just to finish on with this last hole. We're gonna to go to the chip and then we're gonna go back to the approach because I think there's some interesting stories here. With the chip, um, with the Tor Pro, the chip I lost 0.11 against the Tor Pro. Against an amateur, I lost 0.15. I actually lost more against an amateur than I did a pro there. Now, when I first, and this obviously happened earlier on in the video, so I'll be interested to see if the comments picked up or what your ideas of this were. I really didn't know what this was about. I couldn't work it out and I phoned Matt up and we chatted about it and he said, which I would totally agree with, Honiton's relatively flat, the greens aren't built up. I would say your average scratch handicapper has got a better chance of up and downing from these situations than the courses we go and play when we go on our trips and the courses I know tour pros are playing, where they're playing out of thicker rough. So it's marked in the rough, but it's not particularly heavy, heavy rough. Tour pros are gonna be playing from juicier rough. They're gonna be hitting up onto plateau greens and small slopey greens and possibly much faster running greens than I'm playing on. So that's the only reason I think when you get the scratch to the pro, that chipping anomaly flips around, which I think is really interesting. We've actually got it quite easy, isn't it, haven't we? At lots of the golf courses we play, certainly here in the UK, where that you know this has been this course has been here 100 years. They weren't building greens up; they were literally cutting spaces out to put a flag in. Um, so I think that's an interesting little stat there. I'd love to see if any of you picked up on that or what your ideas are of why that flips around on strokes gained. So obviously it's a four, five, nine, par five for the members. I always play this as a par four in my head, but it's 20 to 25 yards uphill as well. So it really does play over the two shots. It does play about 500 yards, which is why it's, it, I mean, the par, it's a par five for the members and it averages one shot over the par still. Now I'm just gonna do something with my second shot. So my second shot against a scratch handicapper gained 0.17. Against the Tor Pro, it lost 0.17. One one, and it's around this 200 yard space, which is really where you see the tour pros go like crazy good to so the amateurs really dropping back. So what I'm just gonna do, just for my own, uh, I'm just gonna edit this 195 shot, and I'm gonna put it at 210. Now at 210, if I hit the ball into the exact same spot that I hit it in, so nothing's changed, I've just changed the yardage of that shot. Against the pro, I'm not losing or gaining anything, it's zero, it's flat. So at 210, same shot, same spot, same miss with that approach shot into that hole, no gains or losses against the pro, and now against an amateur, I'm gaining two points, uh, 0.27. So by moving that 15 yards further back, but hitting the same club to the exact same spot, I'm just gonna modify this back. It has a, diff um, a huge difference on my stats. So think about that. 
if I can be the same player, but gain 10, 12, 15 yards with an iron shot, which is something I have actually done with the movements I've done, I've gained a club, I'd say eight to 12 yards at a push, but still not enough, not enough. If I can hit that six iron from 210 and have the same dispersion because I'm applying the same D plane, so the same loft, or dynamic loft is hitting that ball. So I've got the same skills at trying to move that ball with tilted axis left or right. So for dispersion, I'm going to make more gains. I'm just making more gains as the same player. So the exact carbon copy player, but hitting it further, again, you can just see the advantages it gives you over time to make more gains. I can't wait to hear what you got to say about this one because I know strokes gained fries people's brains. It scares people. I know people are not huge fans of stats and it can get a bit boggy, but I'll be, look, I'll be as honest as I can be. And there is so much information online at the moment on how to get better at golf and how to play better on the course. And it's based so much on cliche that it's, it breaks my heart to see from all the good work so many pros have done. If you can start looking at your golf this way, if you start seeing 0.2s, 0.3s, 0.4s, 0.1.2s, these kind of ideas, rather than I want to have less free putts to save four shots, you will be a better player. Any good player I played with growing up and when I used to compete, in our heads, we were already doing this. I knew a birdie on a certain par four was way above average than other people were doing on that windy, wet, whatever condition day, compared to making a bogey on a very simple par three because I have a silly free putt, or I hit a pulled iron shot, which you know I, I, I haven't done for ages, and then I miss a green, don't get them down. And I think, you know, the field of birdie and empower in this one I've now got to get back so thinking about it in this more statistic kind of statistic based data driven way it helps you not let your emotions get on top of you because you're going to apply logic rather than golf it's so clear and so often the more amateurs I play with you know I see amateurs fin shots that go to 10 foot and they're slamming the club down and stuff like that and I just think you've probably gained 1.4 on your field with that shot. Yes, you might want to strike it better, but like the result is what you're after. The result is good. So beating yourself up in golf can have its advantages. It makes you focus. It makes you try to improve. It's something I've always done. I, I beat myself up when I was competing and I get angry and it makes me focus my energies in certain directions. But as long as you do focus them and not get lost in the emotion, and always try and bring it back to data. If you can get, I'm using Mark Brody's Strokes Gained uh, app here. It's called Golf Metrics. Um, it's great. It, it, you know, it makes you see really how you are performing on holes and not. Come on, let's hear you down there. What do you think of that? Rubbish, good. I know it hasn't got the banter in and don't worry, those videos will come. We're gonna be doing loads of those, me and Matt and other people playing, having fun, you'll hear all that. And it's got the same messages in. This is just more condensed into the Strokes Gained ideas to see I want to see if you like it or not, and if it makes sense or not, if it's something you would want to experiment with on your own game or not, down there in those comment sections. Because I'll be honest with you, with this subject, I know what you should all want, but I actually don't know what you will want, and that's, I think, a worry for people who want to get better, because the answers are in here. You just got to be bothered to do it.